Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another HR Support of Supervisors series. Um, I'm Natalie Lindgren, and I've been with you all several times uh, before, either presenting or participating uh, when my schedule allowed. I'm the HR Manager of Training and Development, and today we're going to talk about generational influences at work. And um, one thing I want to point out before we get into this is this is not an exact science. And, you know, some folks feel, well, the generation, the dates that we put people into generations um, is different. And that very well could be. Um, this is also not something that says, well, if you're in one particular generation, then you act or react to events the same exact way everybody else in that generation does. We understand that there are different personalities, um, all sorts of stuff, but this is a basic, based on research, different generations have different commonalities with each other than other generations. So I just wanna put that out there. Again, it's not an exact science, but it really is helpful as supervisors to get to know uh, different generations as far as what shaped them, what formed them, so that way we can better lead them. Um, so we are really in, in unprecedented times. And when I see that word unprecedented, I'm almost getting tired of hearing that word uh, because we're talking about unprecedented times, of course, with COVID-19, which is very true. Um, but in the workplace in general, we're in unprecedented times because we now are just now starting to have five generations in the workplace. And each generation basically has its own shared history and core beliefs. Um, now, if you look at the second statement on the slide, an individual's age is one of the most common predictors of differences in attitudes and behaviors. So again, remember, this is not an exact science, but it's just based on research, based on the different generations that we have in the workplace. So as a leader, taking the time to consider your communication approach with each generation, whether they are on your team or whether it's just colleagues across the university or outside the university, will really help you advance your relationships. And it will also help you lead your team, both in good times and through stressful situations, um, because it's gonna help you better understand how to help your team or to work with your colleagues. So what I wanna show you first is um, the, a table that just shows how I am defining the generations based on different research that our team has done, um, just to give you a, a better idea of what we're talking about with these five generations. Um, and so you have the matures, um, there's other titles for that generation. A lot of times it's the greatest generation, um, but for sake of this, session we're going to call them the matures you can see um, we've got their birth years listed um, then also what their age range is today and then the final row shows the percentage of that generation that was in the workforce as of 2018 and we will be updating this soon uh, with more recent numbers um, but so you got the matures then you have the baby boomers um, generation X, which is really the smallest generation um, that's listed here in, in, as far as um, population. Then you have the millennials, or they're also known as Gen Y, um, but I think recently um, what we hear the most is millennials. And then Generation Z, and that is the generation that is just now really coming into the workforce. Um, a lot of them are, well, you can see they're 21 and under. So. Um, they're just now coming in, and this is the generation that right now we know the least about, of course, as far as in the workforce, because, because they're brand new. Um, but what I, I just wanted to show this to you just so you could kind of get a better idea of how we are defining the different generations. And if you were to do your own research, the dates may vary a little bit. Um, and again, you, you can't just lump one person into the same way of thinking just because, for example, I'm in, gener I'm in Gen X. Um, not giving away my age or anything, but I, I fall into Gen X. Um, but 
you know, sometimes you can slide from one generation to the other, especially depending on if you're on the cusp of one generation. Um, and these slides just a, a chat just came in and these slides will be available after the session uh, as Eddie usually sends these out. So um, this is just so you can kind of see where we're going with the different generations. Um, so let's move on to workplace characteristics. So to better lead your team, to better communicate with your team, it's important to understand some basics around each of the different generations and their characteristics. Um, so I'm just gonna start from left to right and just give a high level overview of what is on this slide. So with the matures, they place great faith in institutions, in the nation's institutions. So people, organizations, and government. Um, interpersonal skills, they have mastered interpersonal skills, uh, which when you think about it, it's probably due to the fact that when they were in the workforce, I mean, we certainly did not have uh, computers. Um, boy, computers were new when I was entering the workforce, basically. So um, interpersonal skills were key. Um, they value quality over speed. With the baby boomers, we've got the word workaholics in quotes at the top there. Uh, baby boomers, that generation really, that's where the workaholic um, word came into being was with the baby boomers. Um, they evaluate themselves and others based on hours spent on the job. They are team players. They are big into relationship building, um, FaceTime. They want that networking time. Then when you've got Generation X, and if you look at it, they're a little opposite from matures. They value productivity over time spent. Um, they don't want to be a workaholic. Gen X in general, they want to have a good work-life balance. They are efficient and tend to work much more independently. They want more control over decision-making. Um, not what someone has predetermined for them. We move on to millennials. Um, they really, this is probably something I love the most about them is they really want uh, coaching. They thrive in a coaching culture, so development. They're hungry for that. Um, they are much more flexible maybe than some other generations. And they are also the digital pioneers, uh, meaning they came up when technology really started to majorly boom is when uh, millennials were coming up. And then of course we've got D Gen Z, which we're still trying to learn about this. We will need more time to figure out exactly how they are in the workplace. But one thing that I think um, is really important to point out, because they are digital natives, they have never not had technology right there in their hands. We do know they're gonna need more time and more opportunities to develop interpersonal skills because so much of what they have done has been online, has been based on technology. <clears throat> um, so this slide is a little busy and we're gonna stay on this slide for a little bit. Um, it's gonna be more talking than it is truly looking at the slide. Um, but what we've got here is, of course, all the different generations listed and a little bit about how they approach work, um, their work style, their expectations. And this is really challenging as a leader to be able to um, help each generation that you may lead on your team um, in the workplace and understand how to best get through to them so that we can help them grow in their jobs, in their careers, but also get the job done. So to earn their respect, to earn their trust, um, let's start at the bottom and work up. So let's start with matures. You can see it says work is life. They have a work first attitude and it's based on their life experience. Um, work was primary to existence for those folks. If you think about it, these people went through World War II, they went through, um, Korea, Vietnam, they, they've been there through a lot of difficult times, the depression even. Um, many of them, or at least their parents may have certainly lived through that. And so work is primary to existence. To earn their trust, 
um, need to show respect for the people and institutions that have these long histories. When we look at baby boomers, um, the phrase there is they live to work. They are driven to compete. They are hard workers. They want to be challenged and valued and be part of the success. To communicate with boomers, it's really important to show respect for their contributions, their skills, and their knowledge. So Gen X then is just the opposite. Gen X technically works to live. They have a disregard for the way things have always been done. Um, they wanna think through it, think, well, does that make sense? So they question a lot, but by questioning, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're questioning it in a bad way. They're questioning it to learn. They're questioning the process to learn, to make sure it makes the most sense. And hey, is there another way that we can go about doing this same work? And of course, like we said, they want that work-life balance. We move on to millennials. Um, they work for fun. That's the little phrase that they're, um, they live and then they work. Um, with millennials, they live in what we call a techno world. Everything is instantaneous. And so your solution needs to be instantaneous as well. Um, I know there's a lot of jokes out there about millennials being uh, their parents maybe being overprotective of them, um, hover, you know, the helicopter parent, all that stuff. Um, but what that really comes down to is because if, if that is true, and I'm not saying whether that's true or not, um, they're not as skilled in being decisive because they've not had to be decisive before. Their decisions were all made for them. Um, and so that's, that's an area where we can really help with skill development with them is in decision making. Um, they're more informal than previous workforces. So the best managers for millennials will create an environment where they actually want to come to work, be clear in the requirements for the job, coach them, help them gain skills that maybe they, they didn't have coming into the workplace. And then Gen Z, well, we're still figuring this out, um, but what is expected or the expectation around Gen Z coming into the workplace is they're going to redefine how work is done as we know it. Um, I think jobs are gonna change drastically in, in years to come based on Generation Z. Um, they process information at lightning speed um, for them, it won't necessarily, uh, it won't be necessary for them to know an answer. They just need to know how to find it and they can find answers pretty quickly. For communicating with Gen Z, online or texting is the most common form of communication for them. Uh, picking up the phone and talking on the phone, um, not so much. So it's, it's very different from previous generations. We're, like I said, we're still going to have to be learning how to engage this generation as we learn more about them as they're coming into the workplace. So I want to talk about communicating with these teams and we're just going to stay on this slide uh, because um, communication, it's hard for with personality styles coming into play and then obviously with generations as well. So with the matures, communication, per, a personal touch is a must. Um, talking to them about their past experiences. They have been through a lot of change in the workplace over the years, and they've got a lot of wisdom to share with that. So take time for that personal touch, phone calls, um, or face-to-face, -face, texting or emails, not so much. Um, not that you can't do that because obviously we live in, in a technology-driven world, but that personal touch is super important for them. For the boomers, for baby boomers, networking face-to-face um, -face is, is super important for them. Ask for their input. Again, they've got a lot of experience as well. Uh, they've been in the workforce for a while. So ask for their input, get consensus, and reward their work ethic and those long hours um, that they feel are super important. For Gen Xers, um, this one makes me laugh, uh, being an exer myself, give them projects to work on. I thrive with projects. I love projects. Um, 
let them take control of prioritizing and juggling. Uh, give them feedback though, but constructive feedback and also time to pursue other interests. Um, with Gen Xers, it's interesting because Gen Xers are now in those decision-making seats, uh, managerial seats. We may have a lot of Gen Xers on this call today um, as supervisors. And so maybe I'm, you know, quote, preaching to the choir here, but um, Gen Xers thrive with the projects, but you can't make those decisions for them. With millennials, um, learn about their personal goals and learning about those personal goals will then help you to help them grow in their careers to show how their goals can meet and mesh with the organization. Um, make sure that you give them opportunity for growth, for education, uh, for skill building. And by education, I don't necessarily mean um, like um, college or graduate work, things like that. Um, but additional education, so training, uh, professional development, that skill building, and mentorship programs. Um, look into how you could um, match them up with somebody in another generation who can mentor them. And then Generation Z, uh, again, still learning this one, um, providing the opportunity though for new job duties. Like I said, we know Gen Z, uh, once they are full force in the workplace, jobs are going to have to be recreated. They're going to change, um, obviously, just to keep up with technological advances. Uh, but truth and realism are critical components in communicating with Gen Z to help build trust, to help keep them motivated on the job, um, and also with them, allow opportunities for skill development. Because like I said before, um, those interpersonal skills are will be relatively speaking lacking with gen z because so much of what they have done all they're growing up has been on technology so it's still important to help coach them along with those interpersonal skills now remember though even though each generation in general um, has different styles of communication whether it comes from that personal touch taking time to talk to them all the way to fast, instantaneous, just tell me what needs to get done and I'll do it. There are still commonalities too in communication. So it's really important to remember that even though they're different generations, everyone wants to succeed. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody needs to feel valued. People want to be kept in the know about matters that concern them. So that transparency and communication that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, you got to be open and honest with your team members and be clear in your communication about expectations. Um, and a lot of times that can be really hard, especially in a time like this when things are changing at a rapid pace. Um, you know, we're working, a lot of us are working remotely, or if you're still working on campus, there's not a lot of people necessarily there on campus right now. And so it's a different world that we're in in these, these COVID-19 days. Um, but you've got to be clear with expectations. Um, so that way your team knows what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? And maybe the way we're doing work has changed already because we're, a lot of us are working remotely. So how does that look? Be open with them. Schedule time to talk with them. Be clear with your communication. So when you talk about generational influences at work, I mean, we could, we could talk for a long time on the different generations and go much more in depth, which now I will sh uh, shamelessly plug uh, one of the classes that we offer in training and development. It's called Generations in the Workplace. And that's where I pulled this information from. But that class, it's actually a three hour class. And it is, I, I'm not kidding when I say it's, it's a fabulous class. When I started with UK, it was one of the first classes I attended. And, um, learn so much about communication style with the different generations and how to better support them. And we are offering it virtually now. We have one offering out there right now, but we're getting ready to schedule more. Um, if you go into My UK Learning, uh, we are offering it on June 4th. I think it's the afternoon, but I can't remember. Um, but My UK Learning would be able to tell you that. 
Um, so June 4th, we do have an offering of that and we will be scheduling more. And I promise I'm not trying to plug it like it's the best class ever, but it'll really be beneficial to you as you are leading um, and working with these different generations because that class gives you the opportunity to talk with other folks, other colleagues across the university um, that are in your generation, but also that are not in your generation so you can better learn and understand that. And of course, as a reminder, we have our HR contact information up here. Um, if you have any questions uh, related to financial well-being, health and wellness, course training and development, and then um, work life. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining our session today. Um, if you have any uh, more questions related to generations in the workplace, feel free to email train at uky.edu. Um, or, of course, uh, sign up to attend um, our class on that title. So thank you so much and hope you have a great day.